Why are you polyamorous now? with Matt it was very our relationship was very exciting it was very fun things started to go wrong uh, because we were having communication issues and that meant we started to not trust each other when Matt and I were together I didn't know he had any mental health issues after me and Rose broke up I realized that something wasn't right uh, and I started to sue help and was eventually diagnosed with bipolar disorder thank you so Matt if your bipolar had been diagnosed earlier do you think we'd still be together? I, I think it's, 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 it's a possibility because I think that would have changed the way we talk about things and the things I would have spotted that I needed to avoid and needed to tell you about. Like, I probably would have dealt with things very differently. Yes. Things going on with money and my work situation and obviously my health was starting to deteriorate at that point. And, you know, we talked things over and and she decided, you know, she couldn't, she, she couldn't cope with it anymore. You saw I'd come home like I'd be like a zombie, and I think that, that put a strain on our relationship as well. Yeah. You'd be like, you're, but you're home. Yeah, it's Friday. Like, <laughs> well, yeah, and I'd just be like, I'm dreading going back into work on Monday. Yeah. I hate it. But I think that started to crush me a little bit. I felt trapped by it because I was like, what yeah. am I going to do? I hate this, and I'm trapped. There were certain things that you weren't telling me, like we weren't communicating very well. Um, yeah. So I kind of started to not trust you as much as I did in the beginning. My mental health was influencing the way I communicated with Rose. Uh, the feelings I would have, I couldn't quite understand. I couldn't express them. And I would act erratically. So I imagine she found it really difficult to understand what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. It just turned into like a shame spiral for me. The worse it got, the harder it was to say anything. And I didn't have the words to explain some of what was going on. I think the, the, the thing that most people miss with bipolar is it often looks like just depression and or anxiety, but that's really obvious to see a lot of the time. But then I'd have these, I, I, it's the hypermania. It just comes across as me being in a really good mood and being really my best self and charming self. You, you don't always notice it. Doctors don't often notice it because the patient feels good, why would they report that there's a problem? Mm. Yeah, and a lot of people just don't talk about it because they worry, oh, are my friends going to think I'm weird? Are they going to think I'm high maintenance? It's so much closer to home than you realise. Like, it, it, people just don't realise how many people they know close to them may have something. I'd say I've learned to be a bit more sort of patient with people and kind of understand them a bit more and sort of get to know how people tick and how they feel rather than just assuming things, actually communicate with people and... Have you seen me change since my diagnosis? Yes. You've become more reliable, I think, more reliable to, like, to your friends, and little things like your timekeeping has got a lot better. Yeah, and you've become more sort of determined as a person, like determined to sort of work hard and to get things done and to get what you want done. I'm in a much better place now, uh, receiving really good treatment, and uh, I'm currently polyamorous. So when Matt told me that he's polyamorous, but at first it was quite quite a weird, um, a weird thing to hear because I I kind of thought, oh, was he not happy just with me when we were together? So Matt, why are you polyamorous now? I'm polyamorous now for a, for a few reasons, and, and the top one is to do with my mental health. I wouldn't say oh, most polyamorous people have mental health issues but more that they're more aware of them, I think, because there's so much communication that has to be done. After our relationship, I thought, I, it's so rare to find a relationship like that. I don't think I could find that in one person again. So, you know, that's a compliment to you. Matt seems happier now being polyamorous. I'm not seeing anyone at the moment because I'm still putting my mental health first and, and finishing treatment. Do you think we will always be friends? Yes. I think we'll always be best friends. I can't imagine not being friends with you. Oh, me too. Definitely. Me too. Yeah. And I wanted to say thank you and I'm sorry how, for how difficult it was for you. So I really did put you through a lot of times. And the fact that you'd still be friends with me after all of that says a lot about your character. And I really am grateful.
hearing Matt's apology to me about his behaviour when he was suffering with mental health problems, was it was really lovely to hear that, to hear him say sorry. I know that Matt and I will be friends forever. My advice to any couple dealing with mental illness is it does get better and it won't always be easy. But as you learn to understand what's going on, you'll find it easier to communicate. And the more you communicate, the better it gets.